everybody, it's Sierra, the Artsy Badger, and today we're doing an Animal and Environments Challenge. So I debated for a while what to do for this week's video. I was really wanting to do a creature creation video, but I figured that might be kind of selfish and it's something that I've been doing a lot of recently. Maybe it doesn't feel like that to you guys, but I feel like I've been doing that too much. And I haven't done any of my sort of signature challenges in a while, so I decided to do an animal and environments challenge. The animal I got was spider monkey, and the environment I got was ocean, and so to my excitement, I decided that I would use this as kind of a sort of creature creation opportunity where I would combine the spider monkey with something aquatic to make it be able to live in the ocean. Now, this was never my intention of this challenge. When I came up with this challenge, I always wanted to make it seem like the animal was misplaced in the environment that it was, which I guess maybe it still feels that way, but I don't know that I actually intended for me to ever do any like fusions. Anyway, doesn't really matter. It's what I went with. I know that I've talked so long that we're through this portion already, but I just did a few random ballpoint pen sketches to kind of get my ideas out on paper. But as usual with me, I liked the first idea I had, so that's what I went with. I was very inspired by some pictures that I was seeing of kelp forests, and I figured that it's an environment that kind of mimics an environment a spider monkey would live in anyway, and so I decided to draw a kelp forest with spider monkeys like swinging through the kelp. Swimming through the kelp? Swing swimming through the kelp. I don't know. They're in the kelp. <laughs> And I didn't want it to just be the monkeys because I felt like that would make it a little less clear that it was an unusual environment. So I decided to put some other sea creatures that you might find in a kelp forest. I'm not sure that you would find a stingray in a kelp forest. It might be a little too difficult to navigate. But when I was looking up animals that live in kelp forests, it came up. So you know what? I'm going to say that it does. I decided to use a green Prismacolor color erase pencil so that if any of the pencil marks did show through, it would kind of blend in with the background because I was planning on having it be sort of a ocean blue green background anyway. As I'm watching this sketching process, I'm realizing that I didn't really put gills on them, I don't think, in the end. But I really the only thing I changed was their ears to look a little bit more like fish fins. So it's not that much of a change, but I figured something about them would have to be different to make them live underwater. I didn't talk about it during the sketching part, but I was having a really hard time making their faces look cute. Uh, it was just weird. I don't know if I was just having an off drawing day. But let's just say that it was more difficult than I anticipated to draw these monkey faces. I think they're cute when they're in profile, but I just couldn't get it quite right from the front facing, forward facing, face, 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 face. Then I got into the sketching of the actual kelp forest, and this was definitely tedious, and I tried to make it look as dynamic as possible with like certain leaves going over the characters and things like that, but it was pretty tedious, I would say. And then it was time to add the color. So I decided to use watercolor for this piece because I wanted to be able to do a just general wash of an ocean color over it. I had just recently watched a video, I think it was by Emily Artful, about how to do gradients and things in watercolor. So I tried to use some tips and tricks from that, but honestly I kind of ended up doing exactly what she said most people do 
by mistake. <laughs> and it doesn't look as much like a gradient as I was hoping it would, but that's okay. Then I just went in and kind of blocked in the general shapes of each monkey, which is when the piece finally started to come together for me. And it was really fun being able to put watercolor down first. I feel like a lot of the times I do all my line work and then color in my line work, but it is pretty freeing to do the coloring first because then it just feels like you refine what you've done with your line work instead of define what you're doing with your line work. guys, I am so close to being done with this sketchbook. I think I have one more page and I'm planning to do that today. So hopefully there will be a sketchbook tour up soon. Let me know if you guys are excited for that. I know I am. Sketchbook tours are one of my favorite videos to watch. And I feel extra accomplished because I almost never finish sketchbooks. Even when I consider them finished, it's really just because I've used them for something in particular, not because I've filled up each page. Like when I have an Inktober sketchbook or a travel sketchbook, even if I don't fill up every page, I consider them finished when that event is over. <laughs> so I'm really excited to actually have a full sketchbook. Now, originally with this sketchbook, I was trying to fill up every single page. By that, I mean, even if there was like bleed from the previous page on the back of the page, I would stick a piece of black paper or paint over it with black paint to be able to make art on every side of the page. I did, for my own sanity, give up on that aspect of my goal. And a lot of these pages still have both sides covered, but not all of them do. I decided to let that slide a little, mostly because I need to get started on a new sketchbook. This sketchbook has just lost all amount of inspiration for me. So I am really, really looking forward to starting a new one and being able to try a different tactic of sketching. This was probably one of my favorite parts, painting in all the seaweed. Even though it was really tedious, it's fun to do different tones of plants because it fills up the image so much and makes it look so busy, but it also makes it look more visually interesting in my opinion. And I love the dimension that different tones of color give the background. After I was finished with all the watercolor, I let it dry and then peeled off my border. There are a lot of pieces in the sketchbook that I don't peel off the border, but lately I've been really liking that clean look, even though there definitely are some smudges around the edge because I wasn't that careful. Definitely should have been more careful, but that's besides the point. Then I decided to take kind of a mixed media approach and line with colored pencils instead of fine liners, which I guess maybe adding fine liners is still considered multimedia. But anyway, I 
have been really admiring Dina Norland's style lately. I talk about her a lot in my videos, I think, but she always lines with colored pencil and it just looks so cute and soft. And so I decided to try that and I really liked that. It was so much fun and to be able to change the color of the line art. I didn't have too many colors in here. I think I have like four colors, but it was just really nice way to keep the image soft. I think once I start adding in the line work for the seaweed, it really starts to actually look like seaweed. There was a portion of this drawing where it just looks like a big chaotic mess of green blobs. <laughs> you just don't really know what it is. But as soon as I start adding the line work, it starts to look like a kelp forest. I made the decision to not line the darker seaweed because I wanted it to look more like it's in the background. Don't know if I really accomplished that or not, but that was what I was going for. And that's it. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this installment of Animals and Environments. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next week.